Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So in the previous video, uh, we have seen uh, uh, the cell about the cells how they act as a, a very potential source of biological evidence. Uh, in this video, we'll be discussing about the sources of biological evidences part three, which is the tissues. Now, what are tissues? Tissues are basically the group of cells with similar shape and function. Now. In simple language, we can say when a group of cells which have similar structure and they combine to form a uh, or to perform a common function, they are called tissues. There are many types of tissues which are epithelial, muscular, connective and nervous. Basically, we have to study about these four basic structures about the skin, the hair, bone and teeth and how uh, they act as a potential source of biological evidence. As from the forensic point of view, these four uh, tissues are basically very important. We'll be studying in detail about their biology as well as how they act as source of DNA evidence. Moving further, let's understand about skin. So, what is skin? Skin is the largest organ of the body. Basically, uh, it covers the entire body and it has many specialized structures that include uh, various glands like the sebaceous and the sweat glands. Other, other structures are the hair follicles and nails. Further, the uh, skin of the dorsal area of the body is usually thicker than the ventral area of the body. Now, what is the dorsal and the ventral area? Dorsal area is also called the posterior area of the body or we can say the uh, back part of the body while the ventral area is the anterior portion of the body or the front part of the body. So, uh, the the skin of the dorsal area of the body is usually thicker than the ventral area. Now, let's understand the layers of skin. So, or if we uh, take a sectional view of the skin, the skin is composed of many layers, which are epidermis, the outermost layer. Second is the dermis, which is the middle layer and the subcutaneous layer, which is the innermost layer. See this in the diagram here. So, the epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin. And the dermis is shown. Further, there is an interior subcutaneous layer, which is the innermost layer. You can see here that epidermis is further composed of four layers, which are basal layer, spinous, granular, and conified. These layers are very important, and we'll be discussing it in a bit detail in the upcoming slides. Firstly, let's understand more about uh, the layers of the skin. So, the skin usually contains three layers, as we have discussed earlier. The upper or the outer layer is the epidermis or the epidermal layer. It usually contains melanocytes, which are the cells that contains melanin pigment. Melanin is the basic pigment which is uh, responsible for causing skin pigmentation. Further, the epidermis, as we have discussed earlier, it is a multilayered tissue that contains a morphologically distinct zones like the basal, spinous, granular and the conified layer. For the time being, let's discuss about the second layer, which is the dermis. It is the middle layer of the skin. It usually contains fibrous collagen proteins, which are secreted by fibroblast cells. Also, it also contains hair follicles. So, the hair follicles are embedded in the dermis of the skin. Sweat glands are also present, blood, lymph vessels and nerves. These are the important structures which are present in the dermis layer of the skin. Now, the third or the innermost layer or the deepest layer of the skin is the subcutaneous layer, which consists of collagen networks and adipose tissue. Adipose is usually a, uh, the uh, tissue consisting of fat and it is responsible to prevent loss of heat from the body. So, hope you have understood in brief about all the layers of the skin. Now, let's discuss in a bit detail about the epidermis layer and how it acts as a source of uh, evidence. So, the epidermal layer, here is a more detailed diagram showing the layers of the epidermis. Let's see the uh, scientific names. The basal layer is also called the stratum basale. Then the layer, the next layer is the stratum spinosum. Then above which is the stratum granulosum layer. Then comes the stratum lucidum and the stratum corneum, which is the outermost layer of the skin. From the exam point of view, these layers are important. And as the uh, net exam pattern is, uh, or the we can say 
the complexity of net exam is increasing year by year so they may ask about the uh, layers of the skin or we can say the order in which the layers of the skin are arranged from outer to inner or uh, from the inner to the outer so you have, you can remember this with a simple mnemonic that is stated here which is uh, from the outermost to the innermost layer which is the come let's get sun burn come stands for corneum then let stand for lucidum g of the get stands for granulosum s of of the sun stands for spinosum and burn stands for basale so let's understand how this epidermis it acts as a source of evidence for our forensic investigation or forensic significance so this epidermal layer it renews continually renews or we can say replenish continuously rejuvenates continuously and how it renews it's through the process of proliferation and differentiation now what is proliferation proliferation is usually through multiplication the cells in this layer they usually multiply while differentiation usually means uh, from the immature state or from the unspecialized state they grow and they become mature and become specialized in performing certain functions so this epidermal layer through the process of proliferation and differentiation of the keratinocytes these are the cells uh, which are the most dominant cell type constituting the epidermis it also contains keratin protein you can see here keratinocyte this these keratinocytes they grow and they differentiate uh, and they renew the epidermis now these keratinocytes they are present in the basal layer and from this layer they through the process of differentiation and proliferation they form they migrate to the upper layers of the epidermis and when they reach the spinous and granular layers when they reach the stratum granulosum and stratum spinosum layers what they they lose their ability to uh, proliferate and differentiate now as these cells reach the cornified layer when they reach the stratum corneum layer they be usually become filled with keratin filaments and they get differentiated into corneocytes so the stratum corneum layer consists of cells which are called corneocyte these these corneocyte cells they are usually dead cells and they uh, lose their organelles and nucleus through the process of differentiation and further proliferation and they become dead so the corneocytes are then shed from the skin surface this is very important these corneocytes cells they are responsible for the or they act as a source of what we called as touched evidence which we get from the skin so this is the basic principle how skin has a forensic significance these corneocytes are shed and they act as potential source of evidence biological evidence or we can say potential source of dna evidence now in the next slide we'll understand how these uh, corneocytes act as a source of dna evidence so let's see so skin as a source of dna evidence the evidence from skin contact which is also referred to as touched evidence it can be collected and used for forensic dna analysis why because these touched evidence they contain corneocyte cells or the shed skin cells through which we can extract the dna and further do dna analysis after collection dna profile can be obtained from these shed skin cells and uh, further we can get investigative leads through it so you can see here in this picture depicted uh here it contains cell free dna fragment associated residual dna transferred exogenous and endogenous nucleated cells and enucleated corneocytes touch this touched evidence it usually contains minute quantities of nuclear dna small quantities of nuclear dna can also be found which can act as a source of dna evidence additionally uh, it also contains sweat glands uh, sweat glands which are present in the skin they produce sweat and when this sweat is deposited on any surface it loses its self free dna on that surface and through it we can uh, extract the dna and do the further dna analysis for investigative purposes for the small number of nucleated cells can also be observed in the touched evidence uh, they may got deposited there through the various ducts like 
sweat and sebaceous ducts so these through these uh, evidences uh, through these sources we can get dna evidence do the dna analysis do the identification so here we can see that if uh, other sources of evidences are not present at the scene of crime how we can extract these trace evidence from the skin itself and do the identification or get the investigative leads of that particular case so like take for an example this is a hand glove which uh, which was found at a scene of crime so this may be of a perpetrator and it may contain shed skin cells so these shed skin cells could have been de deposited on this worn clothing and which acts as a potential evidence for dna analysis so hope you have understood how skin acts as a potential source of dna and also its biology and basic principle how it can act as a source of biological evidence so you can join us through our facebook and instagram handles also you can uh, join our telegram channel and uh, visit our uh, you can visit our website saviforensic.com where you can find quality content relating to many uh, quizzes mcqs Uh, many articles important articles which are uh, very uh, which are very important from your exam point of view for the there are many important case studies which will help you to learn and also you if you have any kind of doubt or any kind of suggestion you can also contact us through our whatsapp number which is given below here in the next video we'll be looking about this we'll be looking at the second part of the tissue that is the hair how it can act as a source of uh, biological evidence we will be studying about the biology of the hair and how hair can act as a source of dna evidence hope you have liked this video further you can share it with your friends and spread the knowledge of forensics subscribe to this channel for important content related to forensics and thank you very much for joining us please stay tuned for further videos